Our A&E WeatherPro awning fabric has seen better days, so today we'll demonstrate how to replace it with beautiful new material from Tough Top Awnings. We're here in Vancouver, Washington with Ray and Tyler and their crew at Tough Top Awnings. We're watching our new fabric being custom made to our exact measurements using top quality materials and stapling, sewing, gluing, and trimming with craftsmanship and pride. Their attention to detail assures a great look and a long life. We're honored that Tough Top Awnings offers a 5% discount to our viewers because their products are something we truly believe in and heartily recommend to friends. If you don't think you can replace your own WeatherPro awning, we're going to show you how. To see how to replace other types of awnings or slide toppers, check out our entire playlist of tutorial videos. Here are the tools we'll be using today. Of course, we'll need a couple of sturdy step ladders, a cordless drill with an assortment of bits, including the correct size Torx bit for the side screws on the awning arms, a pop rivet gun and rivets, a flat blade screwdriver, felt tip marker, a heavy duty wire cutter, a tape measure, some zip ties, a razor knife, silicone lubricant, a file, and something to pin the roller tube with, like this straight pick, which is available on the Tough Top Awnings website. Start by extending the awning several inches, so the hole at the left end of the roller tube faces outward, away from the RV. If needed, roll the awning in or out a small amount until you can see daylight straight through the hole. Insert a straight pick or other similar tool into the hole in the roller tube, which will pin the spring. At the other end of the awning, pop off the metal cover at the top of the front arm, then unplug the wires that power the motor. Back on the rear ladder, remove the cover at the top of the left arm, exposing the bolts that hold the arm in place. Just be aware that there are nuts on the back of each bolt, but they don't require a wrench because they're locked in place in this narrow channel. So you can just remove both bolts and retrieve the two nuts from behind the bracket. Now remove the four screws that hold the bracket in place. Two screws on each side. This is where you'll need that Torx bit. Then lift the bracket out and set it aside. Push the left arm against the RV and secure it with a zip tie. Then add another zip tie just below the first. Now remove the bolt that holds the roller tube to the awning arm. While we're still on the rear ladder, we can remove the screw that holds the fabric in place on the side of the RV. Move to the front ladder, remove the bolt cover, and replicate the same steps you've already done on the left arm. Remove the two bolts and retrieve the nuts. Remove the four screws. Two from each side. Lift out the bracket. Secure the arm to the side of the RV with two zip ties. Remove the bolt that secures the roller tube to the awning arm and remove the screw that secures the fabric in place on the side of the RV. With one person on each ladder, lift both ends of the roller tube out of the arms and begin unrolling the fabric down the side of the RV. Make sure to hold the roller away from the bodywork. and protect the paint job from scratching as needed. Drill out the rivets on the right side of the roller tube at the front of the RV. Before removing the motor, make two small dots on the cap and the roller so you'll be able to reassemble it exactly the same way. Now slide the motor out the end of the tube. Make two more marks on the end of the tube, A for awning, and V for valance. That way you'll know which track is for the awning and which is for the decorative valance, making reassembly a snap. 
the marks will be covered by the end caps when you're done, so they won't be visible. With a helper holding the fabric at the front of the RV, pull the roller out toward the rear. Now you can slide the entire awning and protective metal wrap right off the side of the RV. If you're working on a hard surface, like we are today, place the metal wrap facing upward to protect it from getting scratched. Flip the wrap over and use a razor knife to cut the first foot or so of fabric. Use a large screwdriver to spread the metal where the manufacturer crimped the fabric into place. You'll need to do this on both sides and at both ends of the wrap. With a helper holding the far end of the fabric, pull the wrap completely off. Now you can use the old material as a tarp to lay out your beautiful new tough top fabric. Lay the wrap upside down and use your screwdriver to gently spread the openings in the tracks. Use a file to remove any sharp edges. Then lubricate both tracks with silicone spray. Start the beads onto the end of the wrap and carefully slide the fabric all the way onto it. Once it's all the way on, check to be sure it's perfectly centered. Flip the wrap upside down again and use your wire cutter to recrimp both ends of both tracks. Lubricate the track on the RV. And now it's time to install the new awning. Start the bead into the track and slide it all the way in. Then center it between the two awning arms. In preparation for installing the roller tube, clip all four ends of the beading to about three quarters of an inch. Get your roller tube and start the beading into the end of the awning at the rear of the RV. Remember to put the bead on the awning side in the track marked A and the bead on the valance side into the track marked V. Slide the tube all the way in until it comes out the other side. Insert the motor into the front end, making sure to align the two dots you made earlier. Use your pop rivet gun to install new rivets in all three holes, securing the motor to the end of the roller tube. Now check both ends to be sure the fabric is centered between the end caps. With one person at each end, begin rolling the awning up onto the roller tube, climbing the ladders as you go. Place both ends of the tube back into the tops of the arms. Install the screw that holds the front of the roller to the front arm and remove the two zip ties. Plug the motor back in and clip the protective metal cover back in place over the plug and wires. Drop the bracket back into the top of the front awning arm and replace the four screws, two on each side of the arm. Holding the nuts in place behind the bracket, reinstall the main bolts. Again, you can see the channel on the back that holds the nuts in place, enabling you to tighten the bolts without a wrench. Now snap the bolt cover back in place. On the other ladder, repeat the same process. Install the bolt that holds the roller to the awning arm. Remove the zip ties. Drop the bracket back into the top of the rear awning arm. Install the four screws, the main bolts, and the bolt cover. You can now remove your straight pick and extend the awning. If the fabric is centered correctly between the awning arms, it should lay pretty flat and smooth. Although it might take a little time for it to get settled into place, 
for any last wrinkles to go away. When you close it, the arms should fall directly into place. If they don't, slide the fabric a little forward or backward on the side of the RV until they do. Once you've run the awning in and out a couple of times to confirm that everything is lined up, you can replace the two screws that keep the fabric from sliding out of place. You're now ready to enjoy many years of great service from your beautiful new awning. A mattress exactly that size so it will fit perfectly. Now they compress and roll the mattress for shipping purposes so that it can because ship FedEx. So we are going to take the wrapping off here and let the mattress expand back to its original size. Right now. We can't wait to check it out. And you also may recall if you've seen our video about dealing with sheets that are slightly too big for all of our mattresses, we it use a pair of suspenders underneath the mattress to keep the sheet tight in place. Um, 